If you have actions that you have to do over and over in Excel, don't you wish there was a way to click a button and get them done? Well, there is, and you don't have to be an Excel whiz to do it. Let's learn how to set up a macro in Excel. First, you'll need to enable the Developer tab on your Excel ribbon. It's not displayed by default, but if you're using Excel 2010, 2013, 2016, or 2019, activating it is as simple as right-clicking on the ribbon and selecting the Customize the Ribbon command. Then on the right side of your pop-up window under Customize the Ribbon, look for the Developer checkbox, select, and click OK. It now shows up on your ribbon. So now what? Well, we've got this data that we've copied from somewhere else and pasted into this sheet. We get this data every month, but what we really want to extract each time are the top five high traffic cities and calculate the variance over the previous month. So let's set it up this one time so that next month, our task is literally the click of a button. We go to the Developer tab and we're looking for the Record Macro command. Once we select this button, every action we perform in Excel will be recorded as part of our macro and will be replayed when we click on that button. So we want to make sure that we only do the actions we want Excel to perform every time we play that macro. So let's click Record Macro. The Record Macro window pops up and we're asked for a macro name. We should name our macro something that'll make sense to us afterward. No spaces are allowed in the macro name, so let's think of something. Maybe we can call it Monthly Stats. We're also asked what shortcut key we'd like to assign to this macro. Now be careful here. We can combine the shortcut key with any letter of the alphabet, but we don't want to overwrite an existing shortcut like Control P to print or Control S to save. A good way to double check this is to test out the shortcut we want to use before we save it as a macro. Since every letter of the alphabet in combination with the control key has been assigned a shortcut in Excel, maybe you don't want to overwrite an existing command. So a good option is to use control shift and a letter of the alphabet. Maybe we can do control shift M. We'd simply select the shift and M keys together and it shows up in our record macro window as control shift M. The next thing we'll want to do is to tell Excel where to store this macro. You'll see three options, in a personal macro workbook, in a new workbook, or in this workbook. Personal workbook means that you'll want this macro to be available to you on any Excel workbook that you open on this computer. Of course, new workbook means it's gonna be for a new workbook that hasn't been created yet, and this workbook means it'll only be available for this particular workbook. So let's select this workbook. And in this description box, we can type a more detailed description if we feel that later we're gonna forget exactly what actions this macro performs. So maybe we could type add variance column and filter top five. And we click OK. Once we do, We'll notice that the icon we selected before changes from record macro to stop recording. This means that Excel is taking note of each click we make and storing it in sequence until we click stop recording. We can also stop recording the macro by clicking on the gray square at the bottom of our workspace. So first, let's create our variance column. And in this column, we wanna find the difference between the current and the previous month as a percentage of the previous month. So this is a formula. We copy this formula to all the other items on the list. And of course, we want this variance displayed as a percentage. We also want to format our data set so that the data is visible and easily understood. So let's make the header stand out. And also the title of our data. We see that some of the information is cut off, so let's auto fit these columns. And finally, we'll go to the data tab because we want to create that filter. We select the filter icon and we're filtering by the current 30 day period. We want to see the top five items. So we go to the number filter and change top 10 to top five. So we're happy with these steps so we can stop recording this macro. 
And the next time we press Control Shift M in this workbook, these same actions will be performed again. Let's try it out. We've copied our data from its source and now we're ready to paste. We press Control V. So now the raw data is in our worksheet. We want to run this macro. Remember, our shortcut key was Control Shift M. And there we have it. The top five cities are filtered and showing up on the worksheet. So that's great. But what if you can't remember the shortcut keys you use for a macro? Well, you could always go to the Developer tab, click on Macros, select the macro name, and click on Options. There you'll see the shortcut key to initiate that macro. Or you could just hit Run with that macro name highlighted. But there is something else that you can do at the initial setup stage or even at this point to make it easier to run that macro and reduce keystrokes and clicks in the future. Let's do it now. On the Developer tab, there's an Insert icon with a drop-down arrow. It gives us the ability to insert a Control button, which we can click to run the macro we've just created. We click on the Button option under Form Controls, and notice that our cursor is now a plus, like a drawing cursor. We use this to create a button within our worksheet. And we get a pop-up window asking what macro we'd like to assign to this button. Of course, we select the one we just created, and we click OK. It shows up on the screen with the name Button 1. Now it makes sense for the button to tell us what it'll do, so we can right-click and edit text. Let's call our button Generate Top 5. We can also place this button wherever we want by dragging and dropping once we see the handlebars here and once we've got this black cross. So let's right click. Maybe we want this button here so it'll always be at the top of our page. We click outside and when next month rolls around and we click this button, the macro runs again. Let's try it out now. We can copy our existing sheet so that our macro button is already there. We right click and we want to make a copy. We'll place it at the end of our workbook and our copied sheet is right here. Let's rename our sheets. Maybe last month was June, so this is July. We remove the filter that was applied. And of course, we want to get rid of last month's data. So we clear. And now we're ready to copy the data from its source. Control C to copy. We paste here and generate our top five. Great, our macro works perfectly. Ready to learn more about Microsoft Excel? Then check out the full course on GoSkills.com. Click the link in the description.